Now for a question like this, I would encourage you to draw a diagram, a diagram of your particles. We've got the particles P and Q. And I put the masses inside. We're told that P has a mass of m kilograms. I'll just write m there though. And Q has a mass of 3m kilograms. We're also told that they're approaching one another, so they're going to collide. P is moving towards Q with a speed of 4u meters per second, so I'd mark that in with an arrow, something like that. And Q is approaching P with a speed of ku meters per second, so put ku there, meters per second. Now, when they collide, the speeds are halved and the direction of motion is reversed. So if we look at the speed for u for p, that's halved, its direction of motion is reversed. So that's going to be going to the left now at 2u meters per second. And for the mass q, it's going to be going to the right and it's going to have half that speed, ku over 2 then meters per second. And what I've got here is the before motion. Let's just put before. And then here we've got what happens after the collision. Some people draw two sets of um, particles for the after. Um, you can do if you want, but I just think it's quicker if you just do it like this. Now, we've got to find out what the value of k is. So how are we going to do this? Well, this is a typical question on the conservation of linear momentum. And just as a quick reminder, briefly, it's the momentum before impact, the total momentum before impact, equals the total momentum after impact, providing no external forces act on the system. Well, there are no external forces acting on the system, and so we can use the conservation of linear momentum where momentum, remember, is mass times velocity. And we've got to be very careful in questions like this because I often see errors made. We're dealing with a vector quantity because momentum is a vector quantity because velocity is a vector quantity. It has magnitude and direction. So it's very important in questions like this to set up a positive direction. And it doesn't matter which way you take as positive, as long as you stick to it throughout the whole problem. And I'm going to take to the right as positive. And I would encourage you to experiment. Do this question again, maybe with left as being positive. Good practice. But anyway, I'm going to take to the right as positive. So we look at the momentum before impact. Momentum being mass times velocity. So if we start with P first of all, we've got the mass, which is M. And then we have got the velocity. Now we've got a speed of 4u going to the right. Okay, so it's in the positive sense. So it'd be m multiplied by 4u. I won't write a multiplying sign, I'll just put it in brackets. The momentum before, the total momentum of before impact. So we need to add the next momentum of q. So it'd be the mass, 3m, multiplied by its velocity. Now, its velocity, its speed is ku, but because it's moving to the left, its velocity will be negative. It's in a negative sense. So, got to write minus ku here. And that's where, as I say, I find people tend to trip up. So, this is the momentum, the total momentum before impact. Now, we look at the total momentum after impact. So, we start with P again, it's got a mass of m, and we multiply it by its velocity. And its velocity will be minus 2u, because plus is to the right, and it's moving now to the left. So that's minus 2u. Plus, because we're looking at the total momentum, go to q now, its mass is 3m, and we multiply it by its velocity and its velocity is ku over 2. It's in the plus sense. So we've just got ku over 2. And there you've got the equation that we get for the conservation of linear momentum.
So it's just a question of working this out now for k. And if we look carefully, you can see that m is in each term, and also there's a u in each term. So what I'm going to do is cancel through by mu, divide each term by mu. So that will go, that will go, that will go, and that will go. You don't have to do that at this stage, you can work, do that at a later stage, but it does simplify the problem at this point. I'm just going to tidy this up, rewrite it. What we've got here is therefore 4 minus 3k equals minus 2 and then plus 3k over 2. 3k over 2. And what I'm going to do here is up to you. you could, there's many ways that you could do this. I'm just going to multiply through by 2. Multiply the 4 by 2, you get 8. 3k by 2, you get minus 6k equals my, double the minus 2, that's minus 4, and then you've got plus 3k. Just gets rid of the fraction. Then what I'm going to do is add 6k to both sides and add 4 to both sides. So 8 plus 4 gives me 12, and then I've got 3k plus another 6k, which is 9k. And if I divide both sides by 9, I get that k equals 12 ninths. And if you divide top and bottom here by, say, 3, you're going to get k equals 4 over 3. 4 thirds. All right? And there you have it.